Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we reached the surface of Bionis Leg and then met a young boy from this refugee camp named Juju. I still say it's the most unfortunate name you could ever have. We then learned from his older sister when we arrived here at the camp that something has happened to Colony 6. Now we're going to be heading into the cave where all these Homs and Nopon are staying to find out just what. Over this way is Charlotte and Juju. What have you to say? We all ran away to here. Even though there might still be survivors back in the colony. Our home colony 6 was attacked by the Mechon. Will you listen to what I have to say? Let's listen. We had already fought off the Mechon a year ago. At the Battle of Sword Valley. It left us with a full sense of security. The Colony 6 Defense Force didn't even notice the approaching Mechon. By the time the air raid siren sounded, a swarm of Mechon had blackened the sky. They ate people and burned our buildings. Me and Juju dedicated ourselves to evacuating the children and elderly. I don't know what happened next. It's just like what happened to Colony 9. They attacked your colony as well. Yes. It's good that you managed to evacuate so many. We have a Tharon, the Colonel, to thank for that. Him and Gaddo. This Gaddo? He would have been my husband by now, if not for all this. <laughs> Cheer up, you two. Uh... We can't lose hope just yet. I'm certain Gaddo and the other soldiers are alive. They're still fighting. I can feel it. Um... Hmm? You're on your way to Colony 6, right? You bet. We're up for some revenge. I bet we can even get your colony back. There you go, showing off again. If anyone can do it, it's you two. Could... Um... Uh, could you take me with you to the colony? Juju! The people here need us! How many times do I have to tell you? But you heard, the Mechon attacked Colony 9. That means a load of them have left Colony 6 already. It has to. <sighs> Even if that's true. No, especially if it's true. We cannot expose the camp to any more danger. So, you don't care what happens to the people in the colony? How can you be so heartless? Are you that scared of the Mechon? Oi, kid! Ryan! You ought to know how Sharla feels. Watch your mouth and have some respect. I'll go and make dinner. Maybe I was too hard on him. Shulk? Ryan? You really remind me of Gaddo when you get angry. I, I do? Gaddo's taken care of us ever since we were young. I always saw him as a big brother, really. But he was more of a father to Juju. He'd call him kid whenever he told him off, just like you did. I don't think I'm ready to be someone's old man just yet. Wait, Shulk. Did it happen again? Yeah. You had another vision. No! Juju! <sighs> the buggy's gone! He's going to Colony 6 on his own! <sighs> Stupid kid! We have to hurry. Something bad's gonna happen. What did you see? A deep valley. Everything's engulfed in flames. There's a black shadow. It... kills Juju. Is it... the Mechon with the metal face? Yeah. Where does it happen? Is it near Colony 6? I'm not sure. I think so. Let's get after him, Shulk! Hold on a second! 
What was all that about? I know you won't believe this, but Shulk can see the future. The future? That's not possible. That's what I thought too. I still can't explain this, but that vision I had will come true unless we stop it. So you're telling me Juju's in danger? Believe it or don't believe it, that's your call. But I wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for Shulk's visions. Juju. Oh, okay. I can't say I believe you. But what have I got to lose? I like the way you think. Charlotte, you're... What? No, nothing. Oh. What are you doing? Let's go and find Juju. When you talk like that, you sound just like Gatto. That's how I know it's not worth arguing. What am I? Some kind of Gatto substitute? That thing killed Charlotte, too. I saw it in the vision. But I can't stop her coming with us. I don't know how I can protect her. But I have to do it. I will change the future. Looks like just as good a time as any to head to Colony 6. We have somebody new who has joined us, Sharla. I want to shift her to the front right here just so we can get a taste of what she's like. All right. Starting off, we have a tutorial. Be aware of buffs and debuffs during battle. Support effects may be granted to a party member called buffs. Status abnormalities are called debuffs. So basically, buffs help you, debuffs harm you. I think it's pretty standard. Sharla has an art called Cure Bullet, which grants debuff immunity to one party member and also cures any debuffs you already have. To give you examples of buffs and debuffs, you can see right there, things like bleed and sleep are debuffs, whereas physical protect and damage immunity are buffs. Very simple. Now, even though we do need to head after Juju, I do want to turn back really quick. You might have noticed that there was a store here in this refugee camp. Would make sense to equip ourselves before going out to clearly a tough battle. So, what I want to do is, I want to equip Sharla with all my best stuff and then head into the store. As I said before, you typically want strength and agility items on Shulk, you want HP and defense items on Ryan. For Sharla, I would give her priority for any ether boosting equipment. After shifting around all of Sharla's equipment, the only thing that seemed to do better on her was having her put on a pair of sandals. So for some reason, that did better than her combat boots. Not really sure how that works. Also worth pointing out, there are many art books here. Most of them are for Sharla. You cannot buy these in Colony 9, so if you want to level up Sharla's arts further, this is where you can get those. So while switching equipment, there's something I want to point out. Ryan currently has prairie trousers equipped, and I'm going to be switching him to this hide belt. That's going to put him in his underwear, isn't it? Because it's just a belt? Apparently not. Apparently by belt, they mean big pair of cargo pants. Joking aside, that belt, along with the survivor shoes, are fantastic items that boost your stats really high and have some nice gems built into them. Problem is, they are really expensive. Even with selling a lot of my old equipment, I was still just barely able to afford them for all three. Well, except Sharla. Sharla's got those awesome pink shoes, those infantry boots. Don't knock pink shoes, they are friggin' fast. Yeah, as you can see, we have quick step. So because I'm gonna be controlling her for a bit, I have decided that I'm gonna have that equipped so that we can get things done a lot quicker. Now, I know this is gonna sound weird, but before we head out, there are a lot of generic quests that we can grab here for things that are going to be on the way that we could easily complete, and if it's gonna make us stronger for the fight ahead, we might as well grab them all. So, how about I let you get acquainted with the refugee camp music and we accept all those quests now?
And that does it. We are all good to head out for the main part of Bionis Leg because it's every quest I wanted to grab in this area. Now, while we're heading out that way, I want to bring up uh, Material Quest 1 as that just accepted that a few moments ago. It says in the bottom bar that you need to trade with somebody named Zukazu if you want to trade for that item. Thing is, you'll look all over the refugee camp and you will not find that character anywhere. Reason for that is that he currently lives in Colony 9. Sometimes NPCs can relocate, and when they relocate, the items they trade changes. That is what that means. So if you can't find that character in that area, that means that they must relocate in order to trade that item. That's all I wanted to say. We can see a clearing in the trees up ahead. Looks like the sun's about to rise. Let's head out there and see what we can see. Charlotte, do you know which way Juju went? There are quite a few ways to get there from here. But he's in a buggy, so I think he'll take Ragwell Bridge. Ragwell Bridge? It's not far. It's a really old bridge built around the time Colony 9 was founded. Okay. Let's make that our next stop. Sounds like a plan. Sharla, you stay back. Leave any monsters up to me and Shulk. Uh, what? You think I can't pull my weight in battle? I've got field experience as a medic. If you get hurt, I can use Ether to patch you up. Nice. I'm always getting roughed up. You'll be a big help. Come on! Who put this barrier in the way? Oh, now the front suspension's all twisted up. Looks like I'll have to walk it. They're all cowards! I'll show them all. You know, Charla's ability to fight would come more as a surprise to me if we didn't already get a tutorial mentioning things that she can do, just saying. I know that that's breaking the fourth wall a little bit for Shulk and Ryan, but still, just the fact that it came this late, it feels a little bit out of place to me. Either way, <laughs> we have a shiny new party member that we want to test out, so I put her in the lead for that purpose. All right. She's got Heal Bullet and Heal Blast starting off. As you would guess, she's more of a healer character, and both of those arts are far better than Shulk's light heal. Pretty obvious, but I felt I should mention it. She's got Cure Bullet, which we went over already. Grants debuff immunity to one party member and clears any you already have. And uh, about Charlotte's attack methods, you might notice that her auto attack is going off from a distance. Because she fights using a rifle, she doesn't need to get as close to the enemies to attack. Her arts are no different. Thunderbullet right there would get you a critical hit against any flying enemy, and it's actually a two-hit combo. She's got Shield Bullet here, which can grant damage immunity to one party member. She can do that pretty much from anywhere, so that's really nice if you're in a tight spot. Aside from that, she's got two arts left over, and her offensive capabilities are less than awesome. In fact, Metal Blast here is probably the best one she's got starting off, because... It inflicts break from a distance, and it's actually a blast radius move, as in any enemy that's near the inflicted enemy will get inflicted, and oh wow, I completely neglected to notice that I got a gold chest. Awesome, all right. So uh, as we go on, I do have to say, I am not the biggest fan of Sharla. She's not terrible, and just from having her in your party, you will last a lot longer in battle than you ever could with just Shulk and Ryan alone. I'm not saying that she isn't valuable, but... I have my reasons for not liking her. I'll get more into that later, and whoa! Sorry, just seeing something like that barreling towards you is a little bit intimidating at first until you actually saw the level. I'm just gonna walk past that for now, because I don't think we need it for anything, but... I don't know, I just, I like how the enemies have little things to them like that. I mean, that thing was like charging through the area, I mean... It just makes the whole world feel so much more alive when you have unique little things like that, and... Speaking of unique things... There are mech on up ahead. Quite a few, actually. These Mechon M53s, we don't need to hunt for any sort of quest. They're, they're mech the Mechon M64s are the only ones we need to hunt, so I'm going to just try to sneak past these and... Crap, I had to say that. Um, as you would guess, Sharla has an ordinary weapon, so she can't harm the Mechon like Shulk can, but... Uh, wow, I am in a really bad situation. Uh, I think I'm going to pull back for a moment. Oh, wow, um, that's kind of funny. I didn't think Sharla was going to use the exact same words as me. I don't even normally say that. Can these enemies leave me alone so that I can recover? Good! Ah. Okay, that could have gone a lot better. I think I'm going to clear out some of these Mechon and then go on with what I was doing. Okay. So we got a Mechon M32 Scout unit right here all by itself. Even though it is a small Mechon, it still only takes one damage, of course. It is toppled, it's not going to attack, and it is a flying enemy, so I got a critical hit there. Of course, I'm going to inflict break, and there's not really anything else Charlotte can do. Now... 
did some damage there. Is it actually going to go down that quickly? Uh, almost, at the very least. There we go. Oh, wow, level up. Uh, if you've noticed that my experience is a little bit higher than it was last time, not only were there those quests that I completed, though, but truth be told, I actually forgot to kill the last monster for that leg Volf quest, so I did that off screen. So, yeah, I just wanted to be honest with you on that. All right, well, we got some more Mechon up ahead, and I don't need to take these out for any sort of quest, so I will see you guys in just a moment. All right, I've cleared all the Mechon out of this area. Why did I want to do that? Well, like I said before, fighting large groups of enemies, you want to avoid it whenever you can. Take out groups and sections. Not to mention, there's a Mechon M64 ahead. We need to hunt that for a quest that we got back in the refugee camp. So let's get back here away from those other enemies so they won't see us, and now let's engage a battle with it. So, I said I would go into how to use Tranquilizer effectively, and so I shall. This is most effective against a group of enemies. Typically, I like to make Shulk and Ryan target one enemy themselves, and then I like targeting another one and using Tranquilizer on it so that it'll be asleep and out of the way for a while. That enemy is going to be off to the side snoozing for quite a while. If somebody were to attack it in its sleep, it would instantly wake up, but that would always be a critical hit. And as soon as I'm done talking about it, it wakes up right then and there. So that gives you an idea of how long you have. Now, if we finish off this mech on M64, as you might have noticed, I'm kind of not really contributing a whole lot in this fight. Shulk and Ryan kind of have it, and there's nothing I can do till the enemies are toppled. So that's kind of one problem with Sharla, is that you don't really feel like you're contributing a whole lot to the battle except when they're low on health, and if that doesn't happen, she just doesn't feel all that useful a lot of the time. And speaking of things Sharla does that are not useful, her talent art. Oh, her talent art. It is known as Kula. Every time she uses an art, her weapon heats up, and you can see how hot the weapon is by looking at her talent gauge. Sounds nice that her talent gauge goes up with every art. Not at all. It's a bad thing, not a good thing. If you use too many arts without using her talent art to empty out the heat sink, it will overheat and she will be unable to do anything for a while. So you need to keep on top of that and make sure to empty it out in moments when your healing is not needed. By emptying out the heat, you are still doing nothing for a while, but it's not nearly as much time as it would be if her weapon were to overheat. And that's pretty much all there is to her talent art. It's really a shame, though, because Shulk and Ryan have really good talent arts that really suit them well. And Charles just feels like a hindrance more than anything else. Well, no, it doesn't feel like a hindrance. It is a hindrance. Oh, wow. Uh, that last Mechon actually dropped a gold chest. Okay. So, if I don't like... It hasn't lost its luster. <laughs> 100 experience with a good joke. I can't say that I'm opposed to that whatsoever. All right. Sorry about the cut there. Just wanted to check a few things that I'd gotten already. I don't know why I felt the need to do that, because I kind of do that at the end of videos anyway. But as you might notice, we have an exclamation mark on our map. There is a quest item up on top of that ledge, but we cannot get up there from down here. We'll have to go get that later. Not that big a deal. We'll get there eventually. It seems we've actually made it to the entrance of Ragwell Bridge, though, and we got a gold dust illusion. Great names once again. <laughs> Let's step onto the bridge. Hey, Shola, look. It's Juju's buggy. Juju. Shulk, is he okay? Uh, uh, Tell me! There's a mech on. It's taken Juju. Oh. When? I'm... I'm not sure. But I don't think we've got much time. Um, you said you saw a deep valley, didn't you? Yes. Oh, there's a place like that just up ahead. And it's even on the way to Colony 6. That must be the route Juju's taking. You sure? No other deep valleys round here? Not as far as I know. Well, Shulk, let's move. That has to be where Juju is. 